So think about you being in a country overseas, right? You're sightseeing, you're on vacation, you're with your partner, you're with your family, what have you, right? Something that almost everybody does. Not this, not with what's going on now, but you, you know what I mean in general, right? So you're sightseeing and all that. And I don't know, let's just say you're in Italy, for example, you're taking a look at the Colosseum and everything. And then all of a sudden, a lightning bolt goes off, a very random lightning bolt, and you can't explain it. You have no idea what it is. And then you go, okay, whatever, right? This is probably an anomaly, a weather anomaly. These things happen. Literally, there's nothing to look into. And then all of a sudden, you close your eyes. You open your eyes again, and you're literally inside of a UFO craft. You see a bunch of gray aliens, and then you see a couple of what seem to be human beings. You then realize that as they turn around, they look human, but something's off. You know, like their eyes are glowing blue, and you're kind of like, is this a dream? What's happening here? I was just, I was literally just sightseeing. You then blink your eyes again as these what seem to be humans approach you and then after you blink your eyes you're back to where you just were and then you ask you know your partner your family people around you did did you just notice what happened and they all say what are you talking about you've been here this whole time right and so what i mean by that is this guys I know for a fact that some of you listening and watching right now have actually been through this. Maybe not that specific example, but something like this in general. And the reason why I say this is because there's so much eyewitness testimony that the government has collected on this. But not just the government. You know it's so substantial when there's literal Facebook groups, subreddits, all of that having to do with what they call a glitch in the matrix. Thousands of people every day are talking about how they think they did something or they didn't do something, but they remember it differently or something literally occurred that was extremely anomalistic, whether in their house or what have you. The reason why a lot of these groups are called, you know, glitch in the matrix is because the concept here is that if we're living in a very advanced simulation, there may be some instances where the simulation we're living in glitches, if you want to call it. Now, that's a very confined word and, you know, precognitively dense word that's not really allowed to expand intellectually. But the point here is that ultimately, when we take a step back and we look at the perception of what this could be, this might in fact be a realistic instance. So before I do that, I just want to give a shout out to Do's Ex Machina. I'd like to thank you so much, my friend, for watching. Truly appreciate it. I will get to all of your messages, guys, on email, social media later today, I promise. Just I was just very busy yesterday. And I just want to give a quick friendly reminder that we do have a Patreon for those who don't know. There's different packages, early release episodes, members only episodes, uh, behind the scenes analysis, things like this, private Zoom calls, all that. And the reason why I do I bring this up is because there's a lot we can discuss on there that we can't necessarily do on here just because the videos are private, you know, far less restrictions, things like that. And what's also beautiful is that it's not just me analyzing actual footage and video, it's you guys chiming in on it. It's fantastic because we all comment, we all decide, we debunk things, we, we you know come to conclusions about what we think is legitimate. It's a fantastic community and it's only growing. So if you guys can, I encourage you guys to check it out. Now, let's get into it. So the pond, the synthetic bolts that secretly detach our consciousness for the SSP, for the secret space program. Now, we're going to make it very simple here. Pond stands for precognitively overt non-disclosure detriments. And the reason why that is the case is because we're going to see short but it's no secret that in the secret space program, no pun intended, there are literal people that have come out and said that these instances, like the example I just gave at the beginning of this episode, occurred. Now, we're going to look at two things that might not seem to be related, and then we're going to get to the really good stuff. So just bear with me. First off, we're going to take a look at the Battle of Blair Mountain. What was the Battle of Blair Mountain? Which, by the way, not a lot of people know this, but this was one of the first times, this was actually the first time in modern history, the United States literally bombed its own people. Now, we can look at context. It was over a union argument and this and that, but that's not even the point here. So the Battle of Blair Mountain, and I quote, was the target, uh, the largest labor uprising in United States history and the largest armed uprising since the American Civil War. The conflict occurred in Logan County, West Virginia, as part of the Coal Wars, a series of early 20th century labor disputes in Appalachia. Up to 100 people were killed and many more arrested. The United Mine Workers saw major declines in membership, but the long-term publicity led to some improvements in working conditions. And quote. Long story short, the president at the time, which I honestly can't recall, that's not even even the point here, but I know for a fact, because if you keep reading, you'll take a look. The president at the time threatened to literally drop bombs on these people, on these union workers because of this coal mining issue and all that with the union. After some of the bombs were dropped, because it's been debated as to whether or not some were dropped or not, but after some were dropped, there was something that was emitted from these bombs 
that seems to be anomalistically occurring within these same types of bolts. Now, whether or not it, the Battle of Blair Mountain was a natural occurrence is hard to say, but what exactly fell off of it? And we're going to see here that it was something called fissitin. Right now, before you guys turn this off, just please bear with me. I promise you it'll come full circle. So fisetin is a plant flavanol from the flavonoid group of polyphenols. It can be found in many plants where it serves as a coloring agent. It is also found in many fruits and vegetables such as strawberries, apples, blah, 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 end quote. Okay, long story short, here's the interesting thing. Fisetin is found more often than not within plants that exhibit the Fibonacci sequence, sequence excuse me, which is that of the code that seems to be geometrically aligned with the frequency and the balance of the cosmology in the universe. Now, not only that, but it seems to be highly encouraged by the SNAP program. What's the SNAP program? Very quickly, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistant Program by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Food and Nutrition Service. I'm not saying anything bad about them. I want to make that clear. I'm not trying to fear monger. For those of you who have kids that use this program, that's great. I'm, uh, you know, uh, God bless you guys. But it's not even about that. It's I just want to show that this is what's emitted and what they support in some of the food that they give out and all that. And the reason why I say this is because we're going to take a look at this article right here which was just recently released, I think a handful of days ago. Fisetin, and I quote, according to nmn.com, Fisetin has anti-aging activity in human tissues and extends mouse lifespan, end quote. Now, what we're going to see here is that the plant pigment, and I quote, may alleviate age-related dysfunction and disease in humans, end quote. Now, it's been argued that this is actually something in which the Nordics used to look so young and live for many hundreds of years. But this is not the only case. There's a lot of different perceptions to it. But the point here is this, guys. So let's go back very quickly to my example at the beginning about how, you know, you randomly end up in a UFO. Now, let's take that example. And let's say, for example, instead of you snapping back to where you just were, where you were touring and sightseeing, what ends up happening is the UFO itself is actually it lands and you come out of it. And it's when you look at the external, the outside of it, it's extremely small. But then when you walk back inside, it's large like you wouldn't believe, like 1,500, 2,000 square feet in size, in, you know, in diameter and all that. How do you explain that? You know what that is? That is subversing and not necessarily glitching, but we could argue manipulating what is what we would consider to be the simulation that we live in so let's take a look here very quickly for example at this right here weird uf according to ancientstuff.com weird ufo changes shape spotted over cancun mexico and let's take a look here back on july 27 2020 this strange ufo was captured on camera in region 518 of the enrique rangel neighborhood of cancun mexico now we could take a look at the footage and all that but that's not even the point here norad okay was able to pick this up now keep in mind norad is responsible at least within the west i think other countries too but mainly the u.s and canada for overseeing and defending the airspace that is owned by the United States and Canada, you know, in correspondence with each other's countries. Now, according to NORAD in this report, the UFO in, in Cancun here that changed shape, changed its shape to 10th of the 35th meters in size at a molecular level, which is the same as the plank length and the same degree to which an iceberg recently broke off in Antarctica. Now, the point is, is I'm not trying to make random connections. What I'm trying to say here is this, the overall concept of there being a simulation subscribes to the possibility that there's a mathematical and geometric alignment that causes other glitches to occur. What I mean by that is this. Think about when your computer glitches out. Very basically. There's a very good chance if one aspect of your software glitches, it might affect something else. So do you see what I'm saying here? So let's continue on forward. Let's take a look here. And if we jump over to, let's see here treehugger.com black holes are portals to other universes according to new quantum results that's that's not even the point here but anyways let's take a look so it is made up of minuscule invisible chunks or indivisible chunks about the same size as the plank length which roughly amounts to 10 to the 35 meters in size what a coincidence but again we're not even here to talk about the wormhole thing and teleportation that's for another episode later this week but the point here ultimately is that when we see all of this occurring here, what we have to understand is that the plank length seems to be occurring over and over again. Now, not only that, but another substantial amount of fisetin, if I'm not mistaken, that's how 
it said yes was also dropped from that ufo in cancun that norad quickly snatched up and said no no no, don't worry about it but guys i'm not even at the best part yet so let's keep going there what let's take a look at this article right here according to sky news by the way highly respected one of the most reputable right up there with al jazeera bbc in terms of global news let's take a look here news.sky.com iceberg size of bedfordshire breaks off from antarctica a crack in the ice shelf had been spreading at a rate of one kilometer a day during january all right and that's very interesting and i'll explain why because when we take a look here at how much to the T, this iceberg broke off from Antarctica. At the molecular level, it was found to be 10th to the 35th degree. 35th degree, my apologies. You think that's a coincidence? Now, if we apply that same method to what these synthetic bolts are doing, what we're going to find here is we're going to find that this is nothing new. And we're going to take a look here before we get to the best part at something called metamaterials because metamaterials seem to be the composition in which a lot of these extraterrestrials utilize the Planck theory, all right? or utilize, sorry, the Planck length, my apologies, that allow for UFOs and sort of inverted time bubbles or space bubbles, if you will, to change the holography and perception of this simulation that we live in. All right, so let's take a look very quickly. And then we're going to get to the best part, I promise. According to Wikipedia, a metamaterial from the Greek word, okay, whatever, uh, is any material engineered to have a property that is not found in naturally occurring materials. Again, and quote, very quickly, I want to say, this is similar to what Jacques Vallée has spoken about on the Joe Rogan podcast about how Battelle Corporation, keep that in mind, has a lot of different materials that is seems to be otherworldly because they've been re-engineered at such a molecular level that if it were to be done on Earth, it would cost just north of $1 trillion in cash to even produce less than a gram of it. So we have to use our, our realistic instinct here, let's be honest, okay? Let's use our street smarts because there's a time to use street smarts and then there's a time to use textbook theory all right and you know that i know that we all know that so let's take a look here is any material engineered to have a property that is not found in naturally occurring materials they are made from assemblies of multiple elements fashioned from composite materials such as metals and plastics the materials are usually arranged in repeating patterns at scales that are smaller than the, smaller than the wavelengths of the phenomena they influence end quote you see that right there? That explains the way this inversion, the way a UFO could actually be bigger on the inside than on the outside. That doesn't explain all of it. It's much more complicated than that. I totally understand. But here's the best part. Let's take a look. And this is when it's going to all come full circle. The, the, all the anomalistic occurrences that I've been mentioning here, whether the Battle of Blair Mountain, you know, the... the um, the Fisetin and all that. Let's take a look. Supersoldiertalk.com this and i quote the, I'm, I'm jumping a little forward this is about a gentleman who was a, a sniper in an elite unit a black ops unit self-admitted and all that he has the credentials to prove it and i'm going to put the link in the description for those on youtube but let's look this stuff had and i quote been going on ever since i was a little kid after my first alien abduction until i was 17. when i turned 17 i'd signed documents and joined wraith out of my own free will and i was also kind of drafted in wraith is a black ops psychic sniper program that the marines have that is at the very top level of marsoc it can it consists of 30 psychic cybermetric sorry cyber cybermedic snipers who use remote viewing precognition and sniping skill to get exact shots it was formed in september of 2007 and before that it was called project wraith i joined on february 4th 2008 after that i did an accelerated training program that lasted a month then i time traveled back to three days after the training program started they wanted me, I guess, because of my German heritage and because I have precognition, remote viewing, and remote influencing. And my grandpa was in the Navy. My father was in the Air Force, end quote. Now, before we get to the very good stuff, guys, what I want to say here quickly is that this is the type of background testing they do. For those who have asked me on the past previous live streams, how can you get access to this kind of stuff working in a position there? I'll tell you right now, just by, sadly, by watching this show or investigating other things like this, very rare chance. And I don't want to discourage anybody. I just say that because they check out everything. This is not like you know you submit your job resume and they check the resume and they trust you and that's it this is like they're going through your life 
your credit card history, your internet history, everything, every, you know, how many cars you bought, what, if, you know, if you're, if you're renting a mortgage, everything, anything that could influence the necessary tasks at hand. They try to get you when you're younger as part of the secret space program, because again, far less responsibility. Your soul, believe it or not, is more pure and innocent. If you want to, if we can call it that, that's a bit of a limited perception of the way in which we use the word pure and innocent, but it's more divine, if you will, because the younger you are, the less, I guess, you know, negative you've emitted and things like this unfortunately anyways let's take a look here for my first mission i was sent to iraq during the latter part of the surge by black hawk helicopter and i rappelled down to it from a, onto a rooftop building during heavy fighting and got into a position to snipe i lived a military life and a regular life at the same time how my days would go when i went on missions would be like this take a look guys i would be doing whatever at my house then the military would show up by military humvees that had a cannon on it then they would shoot a temporal anomaly in my house where i was at the anomaly would freeze time inside of it then the military would come in my house and activate me then take me to the wraith headquarters base which is underground not far from Marsoc headquarters at Camp Lehu, North Carolina, end quote. Now, there is allegedly a deep underground military base, more than one in Camp Lehuen or Lehun, sorry if I mispronounced that. But again, we're not even here to make that connection, but we're just going to make it. Let's just put that to the side because that's a whole other branch of things. But if we take a look here, for example, at the way in which he described this, this is very similar and starkly skin, uh, sorry, starkly comparable to that in which other people have experienced not even necessarily you know going on a ufo and realizing it's and thinking it's bigger than it inside than it is outside because some people who are abducted i understand it's very fuzzy you can't really see right and you know it's very, there's a lot of distortion and things like this and so i understand that but what let's take a look here i would then be hooked up to a very skinny black exoskeleton and it would inject me with a clear looking liquid that made me more compliant to follow orders i did have free will and both wraith and hammerhead are good groups that are fighting for people's freedom i would then be injected by a glowing tan looking liquid that would make me superhuman and work with my third eye after that, I would go on a mission for some hours and come back. They would erase my memories and dissipate both liquids, end quote. Now, the reason why you might say, okay, Dave, how the hell did he have this memory back? It's been said that through QHH2, quantum healing, and through age regression in the psychosis aspect of things, you can actually recall certain things, which is how Bob Lazar was able to remember certain things because he was also given a chemical as well in order to forget certain things as well. And so when we take a look at all of this, what we also need to look at here is that this is a similar feeling, this anomalistic occurrence that this gentleman, this former super soldier speaks of, is an anomalistic occurrence that seems to be emitted in the same way that these lightning bolts emit or, you know, are shot off and things like this. So we could argue that because this occurs so much and the U.S. is not the only one doing these secret space programs, we could argue that because this is happening around the world so often, there may be some type of residue. Residue meaning, again, going back to the example I gave in the beginning someone feeling these types of effects and i know that some of you have for a fact now um we're gonna have to end it here because a lot of the things that i can't uh, i can't really talk about publicly we're gonna be expanding on in the members only episode and so we will catch you guys there and if not we'll catch you guys tomorrow cheers